Welcome everybody to another Gems of War video with your friendly neighbourhood guild leader, RJS. Today I thought we'd take a look at the Guild Wars guild event and go through the basics of how that works, how to set it all up, and how to play it. The first thing to note is that Guild Wars takes place over six days with a one day setup time. Every day you will be pitted against a different guild and have five attacks to take down a selection of defenders. Each day also has a specific colour assigned to it, which can give you extra points based on the colours of the attackers that you use. On this screen you can also check your guild's points total versus the opposing guild and whether you beat them on that particular day. By clicking on a guild in this screen, you'll be able to bring up some basic information about them, and using this, you can help try and plan your defences for the week ahead. The most obvious and probably important stat that you can see from this screen is the number of people playing in the guild, which you can see in the top right. A guild with less players is going to have a very hard time scoring enough points to beat you on a daily basis, so using this, you can build your defences with that in mind. Especially as you're starting out in Guild Wars, where you'll face more low-level opponents, it's worth thinking about things like if you are guaranteed a win by the low number of players in the opposing guild and the likelihood that they won't participate, setting up more unique defences that maybe aren't as good as they possibly could be, or particularly suit a specific colour for that day. In any case, the first thing you should be doing when you open up Guild Wars is looking at your upcoming opponents and then coordinating with the rest of your guild on what your strategy for defence is going to be. Underneath the defence tab, you'll be able to start setting up your daily defence teams. These teams can either be completely unique, or the same team repeated every day, depending on the kind of collection that you've actually established at this point. I guess you might wonder, what's the point of creating unique teams if you've got one team that you think will absolutely rock the world of all the other guilds? At the bottom of this screen, you can see the bonuses that you get for creating and defending with unique teams, up to a maximum of 12,000 extra points per week. So it can make a big difference, especially if you're fighting against similarly leveled guilds, to try and create unique teams if you can possibly get away with it. Conversely, however, putting out rubbish teams that have no chance of stopping the attackers is also completely pointless. As an example, you can see in this screen that I've got Queen Isabel in two of my defence teams. This was because on those two days, the guilds we were up against were particularly strong, and so I wanted two strong defence teams to put out. Again, with very little coordination, a guild can put together a set of defence teams that both maximise the ability to defend against attackers and also to be able to score the maximum number of unique points for defenders. Sentinels give you purchasable stat buffs for your attacking teams in Guild Wars. The first two levels of any Sentinel will either cost you gold, souls or glory points. After that, it will start costing gems. All Guild Wars players are ranked from Soldier up until Paragon. And depending on what level you are, any sentinels which you purchase may give additional buffs to the levels above you. So it's still worth low level players picking up at least the first two levels of their sentinels. This can give additional buffs to all the players above them, which may make it easier for those players to be able to clear higher level opponents. Again, a minor amount of guild cooperation here can go a long way. Every day, each player in a guild gets five attacks against five defenders from the opposing guild. As mentioned, each defender is ranked depending on where they finished previously points-wise in the last Guild Wars, from Soldier to Vanguard, Herald, Champion, and finally Paragon. Attackers may choose any team to attack the opposing guild, and depending on what colour is available for that day's bonuses, you may score extra points by choosing a team with more than one card of a specific colour. As you can see, each level of opponent gives a base set of points, but these can be augmented by several different factors, including things like the number of turns it takes to, to defeat them, the amount of mana generated, and the amount of damage done and taken. So you'll want to carefully choose whether you choose an attacking team based on the colour of the day, or one that is easily going to defeat your opponent and deal a lot of damage and generate a lot of mana along the way. You only get five attacks a day. Therefore, if you lose to an opponent, you won't be able to complete the following levels of the guild attack. This can seriously reduce the number of points you score for your guild, and obviously in tight leagues this could affect whether you actually beat a guild on a day, or progress up the ranking system which we'll take a look at later. The best advice? If in doubt, put out your strongest attack. Much better to beat a team than potentially lose just because you tried to score a few extra points. So finally, let's take a look at results and ranking. 
On the results screen, you can see how well your fellow guildmates have been doing against the guild opponents. Firstly, you can see how many opponents they have defeated or have lost to, and their total number of points scored across the week. You can also see which sentinels they've purchased, which can be useful for guild coordination. The ranking screen shows you the total number of guild points that each guild has scored in your bracket. Note that a bracket contains two different sets of Guild Wars attacks, so you will see guilds that you haven't actually been able to attack or defend against. This screen can be useful to check out how well your other Guild Wars opponents are doing, and maybe adjust your defences if you see that another team is particularly strong when you thought they might be weak. And that concludes our look at Guild Wars. So what are our top tips for completing this event? Firstly, check out the guilds that you're facing, and adjust your defences to compensate for the strength of each guild. Make sure you purchase the first two tiers of all of your Sentinels to apply buffs to your fellow guildmates. Consider adjusting which attack team you use depending on the colour of the day to score extra points if you think you can easily beat them. And remember to do your five attacks a day, otherwise your points won't count for that day's Guild Wars, but only for the weekly total. So thank you very much for listening, I hope this video has been helpful and I'll see you in my next video. This has been RJS, see you soon.